New week, new market trends. We're talking three up, three down, and it starts right now. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is three up, three down, where we are covering three hot and three cold market trends in the comic community. Rolling right into the three up this week, we are starting with Archangel. Now, what is going on with this, Jack? Well, Brian, this is kind of a tough one to figure out like exactly where the heat is coming from. I think there's a few different places uh, causing these books to spike. Now, when I say spike, I'm not talking about, say, record-setting high prices for these books. I'm talking about the overall volume of books being sold. There seems to be a renewed interest in this character. Now, it could be the Disney Plus app. We're seeing, you know, that classic 90 X-Men um, has been a very popular kind of rewatch for a lot of us. I just started binging that series again. Um, it could be House of X, Powers of Ten, and the fact that, you know, everything X-related is hot. What I really think it is is Nick from Key Collector Comics and his app, and he did a kind of a feature on his opinion on the first appearance of Archangel. Um, now, there's been a kind of split school of thought. There, The book that has had the overwhelming kind of market share for f the first appearance has been X Factor 24, and that's a beautiful book. It's a classic old school wall book that you would always see at conventions. It's got Archangel right on the cover. It looks great, but guys, you know me. I don't believe in cameos, and in my mind, X Factor 23 is the first appearance. Um, that book has multiple panels featuring the character, and that book has seen some serious increased purchases. It's kind of outselling 24 at this point as far as volume. Not price yet, but volume. But Nick, actually, his school of thought is what book does the, is the character named? And there's a later issue where the character's named. I believe it's 38. Um and that book hasn't quite gotten moving, but it's gotten some attention. Either way, him talking about that character and posting about it on social media, I think, has reignited some of this debate and discussion. And Brian, what's more polarizing than a first appearance debate? Right. And then you say, what's in a name for a rose is still a rose by any other name. So we just turned this into an educational show with a little bit of Shakespeare there. Now, I'm fully out of this because as you know i'm not a big x-men character fan i will say i remember those archangel books got hot a while back i forget if it was the apocalypse or the movie before that you saw those books take a big spike but we're seeing a move again like you said the the volume is moving more than the price and that's always a good thing to know because that's showing that there's a healthy collector market out there because people are buying books up yeah, it seems like they want them for their PCs. I think that's the key. This isn't necessarily a flip situation as much as it is people wanting to get these books. And maybe people who had 24 are now saying, you know what, I need to add 23 to my collection. Now the next one we're going to talk about on the three-up portion of the show is Black Adam. We know recently, well, I say recently, within the past few years, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, was cast as Black Adam. There was rumors what character he was going to be back then, whether it was going to be Black Adam, a lot of people mentioned Lobo. There's a couple other characters out there, but we know it's Black Adam. And I say that also because just this past week, there was a photo shared online with Dwayne Johnson as Black Adam. That naturally gets people moving and starting to buy some books up. But what else do you have to say about this, Jack? Well, that photo you talk about was actually done by friend of the channel's Boss Logic, who actually was commissioned to do that by none other than Jim Lee. So that was shared by the DC Comics account, Boss Logic's account, which Boss Logic's account has over a million followers, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson himself. There's also a date now attached to this movie. We know this movie's coming in 2022. There's also been reports out of Hollywood circles, and we're talking major mainstream news sources, that they're looking to cast a Carter Hall, a.k.a. Hawkman, to be kind of alongside and battle Black Adam in that first Black Adam movie. This is causing across-the-board interest in Black Adam books. First off, we're seeing the Alex Ross 1 in 10 variant for Black Adam number 1. The, the only solo series they ever did for Black Adam was a miniseries, six issues, 
And that one in ten variant has been long sought after. It's a gorgeous book. If you know Alex Ross's artwork, you know that that book has always kind of been a classic. I think that the set itself, one in six, is undervalued. It's only selling for about twenty dollars, Brian. And you know how I feel about sets. I think that's a good pickup right now. And I've often found those books in dollar bins. And I'll tell you, issue number six is the hardest to find of the group. But Shazam number twenty-eight. That's the first modern appearance of. Black Adam. That has been obviously the leader in the clubhouse. Yes, he appeared in the Golden Age, but to be honest with you, collectors don't seem to have that same interest for that book. It's priced out of most people. And the character kind of went through some changes and some iterations. So that Shazam 28 seems to be the one everybody wants. Also, with the whole Superman post credit scene in Shazam, it seems like DC Comics Presents 49 has a lot of people's interest again with that Shazam Superman team up against Black Adam. But there's also some random cover appearances, Brian, of Black Adams that are spiking into double digits. Justice Society of America 23, which features an awesome Alex Ross um, Black Adam cover, has spiked. Uh, also, Justice League 21 from the New 52 run. That is the first modern appearance of the Marvel family, kind of the, similar to the Marvel family that we saw in the Shazam movie. It also has a great... Um, Black Adam versus Shazam cover that has spiked into double digits. So these are some, you know, kind of like random, say, filler books for the most part that are now getting amazing attention because there just really isn't a ton of Black Adam cover art. And I think that there's a few more out there that are kind of flying under the radar. And I think anything with Black Adam on it is going to continue to be popular. You cannot discount The Rock's popularity in all markets yeah he's definitely a huge box office draw so just that alone people who want to see him in a movie are going to go to it but i remember at one time they were saying black adam is going to be like a superman villain they were going to have the next superman movie take on black adam which everyone wants to see black adam and shazam but no denying black adam is hot this week then the last trend we're talking about on the three up portion is comic book artist especially cover artists right now, in Hyuk Lee. He's been hot for a while, but definitely right now, those covers are definitely wanted. He's built a fan base up, and there's no denying I'm a huge fan. He does some gorgeous cover art. Yeah, I mean, in Hyuk Lee has been popular for a while, and what I like about him is the fact that he does kind of a variety of styles of books, right? Now, what he's gotten the most attention for recently are those high ratio books. He's doing Marvel tales, one in fifties. He he's doing the like one in 100 future fight books. And we've seen some of his books land on various like hot or top lists all over the comic community. But he's also done books like the cover for he man masters of the multiverse. He's done some DC cover bees. He's doing the captain Marvel connecting set, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, he also did like the Fantastic Four Immortal variant. So there's all kinds of undervalued in Hyuk Lee books out there. So if you decided today, you know what? I'm going to try to collect this artist. There's a lot of attainable, amazing artwork by him. But his star is continuing to rise. Brian, you and I have talked on this channel a lot about like A-list artists versus B-list artists. And he's a guy who I think got lumped in with a lot of the other kind of Asian artists in, in the same group. And he's really separated himself. He's really become kind of like a go-to major A-list player. I think now is the time to start snapping up some of those lower printed, inexpensive variants. Because it's only a matter of time before they're more and more kind of in Hyuk Lee kind of completionist. And that's only going to make the values rise and find, make those books harder to find. Yeah, no doubt. He does some gorgeous covers. And as you mentioned... I like the fact that they're not all high up on the chain or there's yeah. a lot of affordable covers out there. So if you're not aware, we've shown some of the covers here in the video, but yeah, do a quick Google search for some gorgeous covers out there and they're reasonably priced and easy to add to your collection. So there's the three up portion real quick. Before we get into the three down portion of the show, we ask that you comment on last week's video. Let us know what your three up, three down is. So we're going to go right now and highlight some of those comments we got. First one is from Fraggle Socks. Three down, stupid DC magazine size books. 25 variant covers for every Marvel book. Cameo appearance versus full appearance versus cover appearance or whatever. And the three up for Fraggle Socks is 
dollar books, facsimile books, the occasional shiny, flashy, gimmicky cover. We need more of these. And his last three up pick was Burger King Cheesy Tots. Has nothing to do with comic books, but we need more. And yes, Crisis on Infinite Earth is a great read. We also have Joseph Three Banks. Three up for him is Acetate Covers, Horror Comics, and again, Facsimile Edition. And the three down portion is Magazine Size Comics, The Option Four Comics, and Avenger Titles. And then the last person we want to talk about who commented is La La Schultze, 3UP, Fallen Angels number 1, X-Men number 2, and Captain Marvel number 13, as well as 3Down is Farmhand number 1, Go Go Power Rangers, and Adam's Family Dead Bodies. So those are three people that commented. A lot of other people commented as well. We want to thank you for those comments. Keep commenting on those. We love highlighting them in here. Great community. We always talk about integrity and community on this channel, and that's what we love to see. Jack, from those comments, is there anything that stuck out to you? I like how there were some similarities between just the three people we, we talked about. Yeah, um, obviously, you know, the whole cameo first appearance argument is one that uh, is near and dear to my heart. So that was probably my favorite. Yeah, we had two people that liked facsimile editions. I think no doubt those yeah. are kind of hot right now because it gives you um, nice keys to add to your collection at a really affordable price. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think those are universally uh, well-received at this point. And with that being said, we are going to now move over into our three down portion, starting with the character Crush. Yeah, now I don't know if DC Comics has released a character within the last few years that kind of had more of a buildup than Crush, right? If you think back to the days of like the comic book invest cbsi google plus um right before it ended there was a lot of talk among speculators and collectors yeah, there was like three different covers people were looking at wasn't there for like the first appearance of crush right so there was a lot of anticipation for this character um it was expected and advertised to come out in teen titans number 20 um the characters actually appeared in a last page splash page as you know comic companies like to do in teen titans special number one um, initially, Teen Titans Special Number 1 was viewed as the first appearance. That now has gotten a solid cameo ruling, and Teen Titans 20 has become the leader in the clubhouse as the first appearance. Um, and CGC even labels cameo and first full for those two books. Then the, so, sorry not to cut you off, but also other DC books that month kind of had that like preview page at the end that were a lot of people right. were saying. Right, they were, pre they were previewing... Uh, um, Teen Titans 20. It was really heavily advertised, and it's it more than of a preview. It was it was kind of an advertisement, but it was yeah, one page preview, kind of showing um, the upcoming book. And I, I think they overhyped it. And I think anytime you overhype something, there can be backlash. The sad thing is, if you've actually read the Teen Titans book, this ca this character has been entertaining. Recently did a heel turn. Yep. Uh, kind of went from Teen Titans member to villain, which is more. Where the character makes sense being, of course, Lobo's daughter. Um, and Lobo is such a cool, cult, popular character that I think that's where a lot of the anticipation comes. This, this character looks cool. The design for this character is cool. Um, we know the popularity of female characters. We also know the popularity of sons and daughters of popular characters. So I think we were all anticipating this doing very well. Um, Teen Titans Special Number 1 is currently a below cover price book. Furthermore, Teen Titans 20, the like solid market deemed first appearance, was on the Midtown Dollar Sale the last time around. Um, also, Teen Titans 25 from that same run, the cover B features, and it, that whole run of cover Bs featured Alex Garner solo portrait covers of each Titan. Teen Titans 25 features uh, Crush. Also, there was actually an incentive variant for Teen Titans 20, which I think was part of the problem was that stores kind of over-ordered to get those incentives, which was a design variant of Crush. Even that book has fallen to kind of like below ratio. and really just isn't moving on the market. Next downward trend we're going to talk about, I would say has been down longer than this week. It's been kind of down for a while now, but we're talking about Agent Coulson. During those Avenger movies, the character got rehyped. A lot of people are collecting those books, especially like Battle Scars, which no one really cared about before. And we're back to no one really caring about him again. Agent Coulson, right. awesome character, great character in the movie, but 
then translate over to staying power. Right. So Battle Scars number one is the first appearance of Agent Coulson, or going by the name he goes by in that series, Cheese. <laughs> um, that is a lower printed book, can still occasionally get you about $10, but the reality is that was a dollar bin fodder book before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came out, and it has returned to a cover price or below book. The other thing that's hurt is not just the fact that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is now no more is the fact that there is a major debate about Coulson's first appearance because prior to Battle Scars, there's a book, Iron Man 2, the lead-up for the movie. Yeah, it's I kind got of that a, one as well. A one-shot, and that features Agent Coulson, the movie version. Um, and then there's also a Iron Man Incredible Hulk kind of cartoon book that came out that's a rarer, tougher-to-find book, but that features Agent Coulson in it, and that came out before those two. And the one book that sells of value is the Iron Man Walmart custom comic that came out in 2008 that came with the DVD that features Agent Coulson in it. That book recently sold for $75 plus shipping. That's a tough to find book. That seems to be the one book that retains any sort of value. But I mean, we're talking about maybe three or four total comic sales within the last couple months featuring Agent Coulson. And Marvel tried to reboot the Shield series based around Coulson, and that did miserably all the number ones ended up in dollar bins yeah i remember the deadpool variant for that yeah the women of marvel variant is real cool but it, it's like the one that doesn't feature colson yeah and you gotta be a pretty diehard colson fan to pay 75 dollars for a book but, yeah <laughs> or, or completionist i guess you could say and it could be an iron man fan buying it really for just the rare iron man book true but then the last one we're talking about on the downward trend this week this kind of another one that Hits us right in the heart, right? But cold is cold. And we're talking about Transformers IDW books. Yeah, so Transformers is actually doing pretty well from the Marvel side. It seems like there's a lot of completionists out there picking up books. And the Transformers number eight Dinobots book seems to be popular. But when you look at the IDW series right now, there's outliers. There's there's rare books. There's books that have always been popular. But on the whole, the one in ten incentives are selling for below ratio. We're talking about the new ones coming out on a monthly basis. We're talking about some of the older ones. And there's not a lot of movement, so a lot of books aren't selling. The last big Transformers event, Transformers Galaxies, I would have to say we can all kind of agree was unsuccessful. Yeah. Those books went well under ratio. The most popular Transformers books that have been released are actually some of the store exclusives that featured Gallagher art. Yeah. And, and I think that what that points to is that maybe the whoever is running the Transformer series needs to maybe upgrade some of the artists, get a more photorealistic art artist on some of these books so that they can kind of appeal to the modern day variant market. But while the nostalgia may be kicking in with the Marvel series, the IDW series is cold right now, uh, and it's just not moving a ton of books. Yeah, no doubt. But like we always say, that's always a good time to, to pick some up, especially if you're yes. a fan, because. There's no, well, there is better because Master of the Universe for me, definitely. But Transformers, one of those 80 nostalgia. If you grew up in the 80s, you just pick up those books. Like you said, the Marvel ones especially. But Transform IDW books, good buying opportunity if you're looking to add those to your collection now. Right. And the, the biggest thing to remember is a year ago, we could have been talking about Ninja Turtles in the same way. But then Jenica happened. And once Jenica happened, everything spiked. So Transformers could have an event in the next year that just changes the course of everything. So now is the time to pick these books up if there's books you've been looking for. So there it is, guys. Three up, three down. Let us know in the comments again, what do you think? What are your three hot, three cold picks for the week? And new comic book that just came out today from Image Comics Skybound imprint, Heart Attack. We had Sean Kittleson on this channel, did an interview Talked about his work, talked about how he came up through comics, started also as a video game writer, but Heart Attack hit store shelves today. If you want to know a little bit more background on that, make sure you check out the interview right here on this channel right now. I'll put a card up above as well as a link in the description. Be on the lookout as well. Tomorrow night we have that Bolo show that's going to premiere as well as a back issue Bolo that will be published right after that. This has been 3 Up, 3 Down. Jack DeMeo and Brian Superman's Comics, make sure you click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video.